Hey everyone. How's it going? Let's play some Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Alright, so as promised in the last episode, we're going to check out Peach's Castle and the things that we can do in the game to upgrade ourselves. So, um, now this Battle HQ Rabo Latori has been updated and I don't know if it's because I bought a later version of this game, which I think is the case. So if you're buying the game now on Switch, um, it's probably discounted and it probably comes with these, this pixel pack. Um, because the version that I purchased anyway also came with the Donkey Kong DLC. So if you buy that version, you get this pixel pack. And these pixelated weapons with these awesome, you know, like pixely Minecrafty graphics are insane they are just better than the base weapons so um yeah um and you also get this steampunk pack so i think there's a lot of different um maybe cosmetic weapons that you get i've only purchased the game once and it was a version that came with these two packs and donkey kong so um if your version is older or different than mine um you know, that's the reason why. So now you get here and you can change your team. Now you can see I don't have anybody but the initial three people, Rabbit Peach, Rabbit Luigi, but you can see that there are five other characters you can get to complement your roster that I don't even have. All right. But let's dive into what information becomes transparent in the game. So now that you can open up this screen, you can start to see the characters and their statistics so Mario um, they tell you in the right hand upper right corner here there's just a little box that gives you some context about the character and explains their role for your party so it says Mario's offensive talents make him a natural choice to lead the charge in battle he's a mid to close range fighter with excellent mobility so they kind of explain like how you should play this guy and what role in a, a vaguely Holy Trinity style party he should be. Um, if you're not familiar, Holy Trinity is a kind of game term that is derived from Dungeons and Dragons where effectively you have a tank, a healer, and a DPS unit. And if you need one of each of those, and that's why there's three and that's why it's called the Holy Trinity. Now, if you have more people in your party, you can, like, have support characters and different things. But those primary roles for most games need to be filled. Now, notice you have a party of three here. However, that's not to say that you can't deviate from that. In this game, um, there are healers, there are range DPS, and there are tanks, which are more just, like, close-range fighters. So, you know, you could have a balanced party or you could have, um, you know, a singular focus party with like all melee people or all ranged people later in the game once you get more options. Right now, they give you this balanced party with Peach, who is the healer, and Luigi, who is like the defensive specialist, and he's more of a support character. Um but he fires at range, so he's kind of like DPS slash support. Anyway, the other thing yeah. that you get about your character is you can see their main attributes and statistics. You can push X to kind of go on each of the different attributes and get an explanation of them. So it tells you his health, how many squares he can move, how much damage his dash does. That's the thing when you like run through an enemy how much pr weapon his uh, damage his primary weapon deals, and very soon in the game, you're going to get a secondary weapon unlocked, so you have more options, like you can use your primary weapon, or you can use your secondary weapon, and you can change your character's loadout to do different things based on the enemies you're facing or the style of gameplay you want. Uh, right now he has this blaster, and it says it's short to mid-range that fires one round at a time at a single target. This is how far he jumps when he does team jump. Um, 
six areas. When he leaves a pipe, he exits three cells, okay? Um, and so this is just the information that they're displaying now. More information will become available when more things unlock in the game. Now, if you just compare these, um, everybody here is actually the same, except um, Luigi has less health, but does more damage with his dash. All right. Additionally, their weapons are have different um, attributes, but not yet. Right now, they're just all doing DPS. All right. So anyway, now you can also go over and change your weapons. So right away, when you get into this part of the game, you'll see that you can buy new weapons. All right. Um, and the weapons that you can buy, many of them do the same base damage, but they are different because they offer status effects. All right. Like this Hell in a Shell Blaster, it cost 500 coins. I have 915 money in the upper right there. And what it changes is that it does base damage like the Blaster, the Lightning Shark, but it also does bounce damage, all right? And again, if you're not sure about that, you just push X and it says bounce damage is dealt when a weapon super effect is triggered. Bounce sends combatants hurtling backwards through the air, even sailing out of bounds. So you can potentially knock enemies off the map and insta-kill them with bounce damage. Um, and it tells you that the chance of this weapon's super effect is 10%. So 10% of the time, it will bounce them and do an extra 42 damage. All right? Um, this tells you that this weapon does low collateral damage to cover. So if you want to, like, blow up the cover that the enemy is hiding behind, this does low damage. And it has a range of 10 now, if I compare it, the only thing different is the bounce, all right? Some of the weapons are locked. This weapon does honey damage, the rumble bee, and it costs 20 coins more. You'll see that it does 42 honey damage, the same as the bounce damage. However, the effect of honey has a different status effect. Um, it It's sticky, it's honey, and so it puts honey all over the enemy, and they are stuck to the ground, meaning they can't move. Honey is one of my personal favorite status effects in the game, because if you use it on an enemy, for example, that only has a, a short range attack, you can get them stuck, and then they can't do any damage to anyone unless you move adjacent. So that's really good. Additionally, you can also fire at an enemy and get them stuck so that they can't move behind cover. So I like honey a good bit. 10% of the time it'll do this. Also, um, this does bonus damage against Ziggies. So um, if you're fighting a Ziggy type enemy and you can see what type of enemy you're fighting during the fight and before the fight, you do a little bit of extra damage. Now, remember we had those extra weapons, the pixel pack. Check this out. If I go over here, then I find that there's just this thing called the Fragmenter, all right? And this is... It's kind of like pay to win um, in a way because you just get this weapon and it doesn't... You see, it costs no money to use this weapon. It does more base damage, and it does more honey damage. It has 30% honey chance, and it does 30% more damage to Ziggy. So it's just, like, way better than this, and it's free. And you get that included with the game when you buy it now uh, through... I bought it just digitally through the Nintendo eShop. So just a heads up about that. And by the way, um, I'm going to be using these because they're insane. Why would I not use them? Um, but later you do get stuff that outpaces this. It's just a really nice boost in the beginning of the game. Okay. And then you can use the L trigger and the R trigger to switch between party members. And you'll see that... Um, Rabid Peach has a weapon. She doesn't have as many choices 
out the front in terms of status ailments that Mario has. Mario had the shell gun to do bounce. She has honey. Um, but her retro deflator is just as good as Mario's pixel weapon. And so we're going to equip this. Now, um, Luigi is all about status stuff. And his weapon is immediately different. He can do push damage and burn damage, okay? And so push um, knocks participants backward along with any other combatants in their path, even out of bounds. So unlike bounce, you can, like, push an enemy back and then it hits another enemy and then pushes them back. It also, I think it has a higher proc chance than bounce by 20%. Um, it's lower damage, though, right, than bounce, which was 42 with Mario's weapon. Burn um, lights con combatants aflame for more damage, and it can spread from one battler to another. So um, you do damage to them, uh, and it, and you can, like, spread that damage around. Now, if I go over to the pick, his um, pixel weapon, the ASCII Eradicator, you'll see that it does push damage and it has a 50% chance of proccing this so it gives Luigi rabid Luigi a really really strong weapon early and remember when I said in the last video that this game starts to get more and more in depth and complicated as you go and this is the example of it I now can change party members when I get more and I can change my weapon loadouts and really customize what kinds of status effects I want to put on enemies to create combos um, and exploit enemy weaknesses and take advantage of synergies between my teammates. All right, so this is enough for the weapons at the time being. And here's the skill tree, which is currently locked. And what this lets you do is um, upgrade their skills which helps them do things like move more spaces, do more dash damage, have more health, get special attacks and things. But you'll see their skill tree later in the game when it actually opens. Okay, so now we have better weapons. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of sail over here following our buddy Beepo. And if I wanted to just go to the next level, this is where you would go. World 1 Ancient Gardens, okay? So we were doing levels in the tutorial section of the game. Now we're actually at the first world. And here is the, um, the museum. All right. And so you can just come here to see the really cool artwork that you have unlocked. If you want to check out all of these different collectibles. Here's like the 3D models. You can... Um, select it and you can zoom in and like rotate around and you know just have fun looking at these things as you unlock them all right aha look over there oh it's a special cannon these clever rabbits have outfitted the cannon so that it can launch us back to the ancient gardens the ancient gardens was that tutorial area I was telling you about this comes in handy as our mysterious helper gave me the power to warp to Princess Peach's castle. That's right. So, FB has hacked Beepo's software, or upgraded it, I guess I'll say. It's a nicer way of putting it. So that we can warp back at any time. And the cannons can send us back to the front. The ability to return to Princess Peach's castle at will has even been added to the pause menu. So, this is a really cool thing about the game. You can use that cannon that they just showed you to go back and replay levels. So, um, or, actually, no, wait. Scratch that. That's not the way to do that. I think you do that with this washing machine. Um, the mega bug damaged the rabbit's combo washer and time machine, else I'd take a trip to the French Baroque period. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Man, look at the time machine. It, it, it is exactly modeled after the DeLorean from Back to the Future with its date and everything. I can't recall exactly if you use this to go back to play previous levels or if you use that cannon they showed us. I apologize. We'll find out as soon as it all becomes unlocked. Where does this go? I always just follow the coins and just explore everything. Um, this goes to a place we can't go yet because we can't push. So once Beepo can push those blocks, we can go over there. Let me just keep going. This is another facility that the rabbits 
haven't built yet. Okay. Here's a pipe. Where does this go? Oh, let's get all these coins. Okay, there's a pink tree. There's coins. I'm just looking around for any secret passageways or anything. Yeah, so you can go under this bridge and get this treasure chest. And we found a, uh, a 3D model of Toadette that we can view in the museum if we feel like it. Make sure there's nothing else under this bridge. Nope. All right. By the way, I just really like the touches in this game. I love the animation going through the pipes. I love how when you run, Mario spreads his hands out like his wings, like he's going super speed. Um, terrific. Oh, let me just really check. What's over here? What was this? There's coins. What's going over here? What happens if I run? Ooh, what are these pumpkins? This place is scary. What is this? If we could unlock these gates, we could visit the haunted slum of unimaginable horrors anytime we wanted. Hmm, well, this is an area that is locked for now. I haven't learned how to do this yet. Alright, and he doesn't know how to do that either. So, cool, there's a haunted slum. I wonder if Jack Skellington lives over there. Alright, let's go across this bridge. Just gonna poke around here by this orange tree and look make sure there's no surprises waiting. Sometimes when you just run over the ground, things will fly up out of it. Oh, cool. And we can now from this side we can lower that ramp. And now we can go in a complete circuit around Peach's Castle. Let me just follow these coins and explore in this area. What's over here? Oh. Okay, another place we can't go until we push. Alright. Cool. And then we're back to Peach. Okay, so... Oh, look at that treasure chest down here. Let's see if this goes down there. Why it does. Let's get it. What you got in here? Oh, they have some artwork. Geyser Goombas. Awesome. Let's get all these coins. Anything over here hidden? Nope, Beepo can't go there. Alright, let's go up here. Hmm. Okay. Ooh, what's this cannon all about? Looks like we get coins just by flying onto it. Ooh, and there's a silver treasure chest. Wow. Ancient Gardens VO. You found a gold artwork. Wow. It's a really nice gold art. So that's like an exceptional collectible as what we found. Let me just double check, make sure there's nothing else around here for us to get. Doesn't look like it. Let's take this cannon back. Boom, and here we are. All right. Hello, Peach. Look at that Goomba stuck to the Peach's castle with honey. I've heard if you hop into one of those rabbit shaped cannons, you'll be returned to your previous location. What is she showing me? Ah, okay, yeah, this wooden one does take us back. Indeed. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god, she's going to show us again. This is in case, you know, you wanted deja vu or an instant replay. Now you know. Okay, do not push the A button. There we go. Don't talk to Peach again. She's going to show you that. But that is helpful. So. Mm -mm -mm. Let's follow the sign and Peach's gaze. There's the weapon place. We're going to move over here. And World 1 Ancient Gardens. Let me just follow these. Oh, wait. Sorry. I lied. There's something over here that I haven't yet acquired. Let me make sure I can't get down there easily. Yeah, cool. There was a pipe that I missed right by the washing machine. I can't leave a treasure chest unlocked. Oh, Ziggy's Battle. We found our first soundtrack item. All right. Great.
I personally am not a player who is super excited about game collectibles like that, except for achievements, and even then, it's kind of meh. I will say, though, persist, at least I persist in getting the treasure chest, because sometimes you get something like skill points or money that's actually good, a new weapon, things like that, that you really want. Alright, so here's a push that I can't do. Beepo will tell you if he can do anything. What are these rabbits up to? I wonder how long they've been at it. Oh, pushing the other guy off. So he's saying, I can't drill here, I can't push that, and it's red because I can't do it. Here's a yellow switch. Now this opens up a doorway for us. This one, I believe she said, will take us back. But I don't really want to go back right now. I want to go forward as much as I can. So let's go through here and find the red coins. We got them. And this unlocks a gold treasure chest. Comes out of this little circular sand pit. What do we get here? Ooh, we got a new weapon. Bois Blaster. Like Van Gogh, rabbits often practice their craft with tortured tributes of themselves. Okay, so we got a new weapon for Mario. All right, cool. I'm going to keep going and see what this is all about. So it's another thing that I can't do because I can't push. Okay, so now... Remember... I've played some of this, but it's been a while. This is indeed not going back. This is going to a new place. <laughs> or it's at least taking us towards a new place. All right. So here we are. And we have appeared here. Let's get the coins and just follow the ramp. And look at the beautiful scenery of this very wacky and bizarre world. Alright, let's get all the coins here. Well, this goes to level 3. Oh, no, no, we're ready for this. Because it's world 1-3, not world 3. Great, okay. So it's world 1-3. Alright, so we did world 1-1 one, one and 1-2. One, and it's time for us to get into a fight. Here's the flags indicating a battle and here we go. This guy's doing some stretches. He's got bouncy shoes and a helmet. Is this a new enemy type for us? These are called hoppers. Team jumping jerks. Alright, so we've got new dudes. So this is also how the game becomes more complicated. It it introduces new enemies that have new abilities. Heck, a new breed of hopping enemies. Team Jump will prove invaluable here. Use it to gain the upper hand. Okay. So now we're going to learn about Team Jumping and why it's good. What's this? Our synonymous... Or our pseudonymous sympathizer just sent me a system update. By the way, I thought it's worth mentioning... You may have seen um, a rabid flicker in the bottom of the screen as I was getting into this battle. There is an option in this game, right at the very beginning of the battle, they will give you like a brief window in which you can push the button to fully heal the, part the members of your party. Now, I try to avoid using this just because I want to play the game, you know, at like a medium skill level. But if you find it hard or your characters are really low on health, go ahead and use it. I mean, if you wish. Um, don't let me stop you. But I just thought I'd let you know about it and what it's doing. Now, you might say, well, who cares? You're at full health. After you get through a world, your health, you heal somewhat, I believe, but you don't necessarily heal to full. And your health persists. So, there's a little bit of an arc of battles until you get to the point when you receive the rewards and if you die, you have to kind of replay the battles before 
um, in the little sequence or whatever. And so you might want to heal in between battles of the sequence, and that's your opportunity to do that. From now, before combat begins, you can choose whether to leap headlong into the heat of battle or take time to carefully plan your strategy first, thanks to this new app called Er Tacticam. Try it. Okay, so what you can do is you can just fight and then place your characters and go, or you can do Tacticam. And what this allows you to do is kind of move around and see the enemy. You can be like, who is this dude? Yeah, this is what I was missing before in the earlier levels that I was used to having that they don't unlock or open up until now, which is you can go over the enemy and see their range of movement, the damage that they do, dashing and with their weapon. Um, and then you can like go back to the battle HQ and change your weapon loadout or your party loadout. Okay, and so you can see like where all these dudes are moving if you want. And this helps you know like where you want to move. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the blue, if you have it on this, shows you how far you can move. But if you use the L and R triggers you can switch to their blaster and now you can actually see with blaster how far this dude can shoot so if you're in any of these red squares he can hit you with his blaster you can push y to lock onto him and then you can use the left stick to move the map around and plan like oh okay i need to stand outside of his range all right i'm gonna fight and now while you're in battle, actually, you can always just bring up the Tacticam, like I was, you know, from before. And then you can lock on, do their blaster, and see where Mario can move. And figure out, like, where you want to move based on where they can hit you. But once you've started battle, you can no longer go back to the battle HQ and change your weapons and stuff like that. Change your party loadout. Alright, so... Let's take a good look at this guy. This square here is within his range. Um, but that's okay. And that's okay because he's behind full cover. Now I'm going to use Mario behind full cover here. And we can take a shot at this guy who's just standing out in the open. And boom, we got a crit and killed him in one shot. We also honeyed him. Um, so you can see it says crit, and then it says the status name if it goes off. So our new weapons are annihilating this guy. But anyway, we move Mario here so that we can team jump. You can use the Tacticam to kind of set up to make sure that you don't move Mario beyond the movement range of your allies um, for team jump and stuff like that. But just know that at the beginning, at least, everybody has the same movement range. So if... You Mario can move there, then so can they. Now, I'm going to team jump Peach, and I'm going to put her, like, behind this partial cover. Whee! And she goes flying, and then I love how she, Rabid Peach just leans, like, casually against that. Anyway, um, this enemy is within our range. It's the only one in our range. We have a 50% chance. Let's take a shot. And we hit the cover, unfortunately. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with Luigi and put him on the other side behind this cover. Yay! <laughs> He's, like, laying down. That's hilarious. Okay, um, and let's just try to take a shot. Ooh, great. Okay, so you saw the crit go off, and you saw the push damage. He got knocked way back there, which means he's probably actually not going to be able to take a shot at us this turn he hit peach in cover they're gonna use team jump put this guy behind partial cover and take a shot at luigi oh no they should try to shoot they focus fired on peach but rabid peach did a good job dodging oof and you can see her cover is getting torn up it doesn't have much longer to last um it doesn't appear that you can use the tacticam to like go over this piece of cover to get a good sense of how much health it has left but visually you can just kind of tell like it's not in the best shape anyway um 
Let's think. How do I want to do this? I want to get Mario in. So I don't want to move these guys away before Mario can come in and team jump. So we can use Mario to get like superior position. And I think our best plan of action is to put Mario in a place where he can um, take a shot at this guy so we can try to kill him. Let me see, Mario. Um, I'm not sure there's an easy way for me to know if I can actually shoot. Like, if this guy will be in, within my range once I land here. Um, but what is the range of my weapon? Let me just actually look at that. Let me go back to Mario. And um, check out the Tacti Cam. His blaster damage. Um, let's go to his... So from his square, oops, let me go to Blaster and lock on to him. He can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, that's right. His range is 10. So as long as this is within 10 squares right here, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, we're well within range. So I'm going to move Mario here then. And then Mario can take a shot, and we'll try. We hit the cover. You know, not perfect, but... Anyway, I'm gonna um, flank everyone over to try to kill this dude. By the way, oh, that, a coin appeared. When you're moving Beepo around, he can pick up coins in the environment. And you want to do that as soon as you can, because the enemies will pick them up when they walk over them. So if you want a few extra coins. Now, I'm gonna actually move Luigi and have Peach throw Luigi over here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So Luigi can go here and hit this dude. Or try to, right? Okay, he crit him, he pushed him, he killed him. Beautiful shot. Now the reason I'm kind of moving over to the right is so that perhaps this guy won't be able to hit us easily. Okay, Peach. What do I want to do with you? I think I'm actually going to have Mario throw you right here so you're in some cover. And we'll just take a shot at this dude. Can we hit the other guy? No. Okay. Boof. We get a crit and we honey him so he's stuck right there. He's going to take a shot and he misses. He's coming over here. He's going to take a shot. And he hits Luigi because Luigi is not in cover from that side. Alright. I'm just going to take the free hit. And dash through. And I'm actually going to move here with Peach. And try to take a shot at this guy. Because I think Peach can hit this dude who's hiding over here. Um, and he won't be in cover. So we can get a guaranteed shot. All right, now what we can do is I'm going to move Mario way over here. And then I'm going to see, can I hit this other guy? Yes, but not at a good chance. So I'm just going to have Mario finish this dude off. And then I'm going to team jump Luigi over here. Now this leaves Luigi way out in the open, but it doesn't matter. We have plenty of health. And we're just trying for a, a nice shot. And we got a regular hit. Alright, so he's going to get one more hit on us. Okay. And now it's time to finish him off. I'm just going to run through him with Luigi. And it's over. Just like that. And we cleared the battle. We got it perfect. We had six turns to do that, actually. And um, you can see that our health stays the same. So the Rabid Luigi is actually a little bit beat up. So I need to be more conscientious about his health in upcoming battles.
All right, so I think this is a great place to stop this episode. We have explained Princess Peach's castle, all of the great things there, and we have upgraded our weapons, got some collectibles, and cleared World 1-3, and are ready to keep going further down this ramp, and you can see the battle right down there at the bottom of the ramp that is our next encounter, and we'll save that one for next time. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and if you did like this and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, could you please do so? I'd really appreciate it. There's going to be lots more Mario and Rabbids Kingdom battle to come. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. If you have any questions, please post those in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Take care.